What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a Friday Bituation Room, the free bonus bish. Um, thank you so much for being here, for joining me, for pressing play if you're listening as a podcast. Once again, this is a stream that and a show that I've just added um, because why the hell not? I'm not doing anything. You're not doing anything. And I need you. And I need that. We need this. We need this. Um, Again, this is our free show to watch and listen back, but we had a great Wednesday show. My God, uh, got a lot of uh, good bitching in about Hillary Clinton um, and her just get over yourself. And we had a lot of talk of uh, the groundhog spawn. That's right. Punxsutawney Phil had two kids, or shall I say Phyllis, his wife, had two kids. Uh, she did all the hard work, in fact. Uh, so get at that by becoming a patron or a member. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. You can become a member on YouTube or Twitch. What is up, people? Um, we've got a great show on Tuesday coming up, actually. Uh, Arun Gupta is going to talk about the Zaka Group. Uh, he's a journalist and uh, has been on the show many times before. But the Zaka Group, again, these first responders who were there on the scene in some of the communities that were attacked by Hamas on October 7th and then were have found to have been um, mishandling the evidence as well as uh, fundraising from the crime scene. So uh, they that's not all. They have an incredibly lurid and scary past. So very excited. I guess I'm excited. To have uh, Arun with us. And then uh, Deanne Smith, comedian, um, who has a special out now on Netflix, is going to be on the show as well. And um, she's been super vocal uh, about Gaza, too, which is dope. You know, and again, it's it's hard to find. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about that. We talked about that on Tuesday. But the comedy world, um, I guess this week, maybe uh, the wheels have come off of trying to pretend like a genocide isn't unfolding um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But again, if you're here, like and share the stream. If you're listening, um, give this podcast five stars. And if you're watching, make sure to subscribe right now to this channel. What are you doing? Send in a super chat. Send in a piece of love. Um, it means the world and it helps. It does indeed. Why can't I see everyone's comments? What's happening? Where did they all go? Okay, there they are. Hi. Hey. So um, I do want to talk about Roseanne. I do want to talk about whether Donald Trump is on Ozempic. And I do want to talk about uh, maybe no labels if we have a chance. Oh, that's a lot to get into this little hour. But, um, you know, after um, Tuesday morning, Monday evenings, about the seven aid workers who were assassinated in in Gaza. Um, now we're getting somewhere kind of right. That plus demonstrators locking down outside of Lockheed Martin, um, which maybe we'll watch this wild footage from, but now Biden has decided that initially there were some headlines. Biden's angry. Ooh, ooh, man, angry. If only he had power. Powerful man feels powerless, but only in his mind. In fact, he is the most powerful man. What is this anti-hero? Um, it is always exhausting rooting for him. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, uh, turns out uh, Joe Biden had a strongly worded, not email, but phone call with Netanyahu and was like, look, Aid might be conditioned if you don't protect civilian and humanitarian workers' lives. And a uh, little too late. Little too, a uh, real late, but that's okay. Hey, um, C plus for effort. And um, we, I, I love that we still have to sort of pretend. We sort of like, you know, paint our faces and go through the pantomime that Israel is moral and they somehow try to minimize civilian casualties. And then John Kirby gets out there, you know, just a literal douche in a suit and just kind of, you know, straps in and is like, we don't know anything. We don't, we don't, we have got, we've got no evidence. Um, 
Yeah, you do, man. You do. Um, so anyway, we have to keep pretending that Israel doesn't deliberately uh, target aid workers in order to help with the uh, speed up the starvation of the Gazan people and doesn't deliberately target civilians in order to, again, speed up the extermination of the Palestinian people. Um, but it's starting to feel a little different because now some of the senators, some of his greatest allies, um, Senator Chris Coons among them, are putting some pressure on Joe Biden. Um, this is from the Guardian, Biden allies and Senate pile on pile on pressure. I like this, the word Senate pile because I'm just like thinking of some sort of, you know, I mean, I, we shouldn't be thinking of it, but you know what I'm thinking of, you know. We all know Madison Cawthorn blew the whistle on the Senate piles. Pile on pressure to halt Israel aid over conduct of Gaza war. Um, my view is no more military aid to Israel when children there are starving. Um, so hours after Joe Biden told Israel to take concrete steps to pr protect civilians or risk losing military support from the U.S., top members of President Democratic Party ramped up pressure on the White House to go further. Sanders was among the strongest voices, saying they should not get another nickel in military aid until it facilitates markedly facilitates the flow of provisions into a region that the U.S. suspects is already grappling with famine. <clears throat> I mean, that's not, like, again, so it's okay to sell them 2,000-pound bombs um, and F-15s so long as they also allow in a little bit of aid. And it seems like maybe there's been some movement in the north of Gaza that Israel is going to do that. Like, we can do better. We can do better. Let's let's keep moving on. Let's see if some senators can do better than that because ultimately as um, – I believe it was a Doctors Without Borders representative said initially, uh, the, just pointing out the hypocrisy and the cruelty of feeding someone while also funding their death. Um, we're looking at one of the worst humanitarian disasters we've seen, uh, Sanders told CNN. Adding to that, it was not... Adding that it was not the U.S.'s job to worry about how Gaza may tie into the political future of the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, the Vermont Center added, "My view is no more military aid to Israel when there are children that are starving." Meanwhile, Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen, who I will remind you openly said that UNRWA was not connected to the uh, October seventh Hamas attacks, like Israel alleged, and yet did vote to defund UNRWA as part of the um, funding package that was a must pass, right? And not everyone did. He was a senator who did, which is just wild to think. No funding until 2025. Again, when the uh, ethnic cleansing will be, um, who knows what the state will be at that point. Said, I was glad to see the president indicate that he's gonna monitor compliance and base US policy going forward on government meetings, these requirements that suggest no more anything goes when it comes to policies towards Netanyahu government. Um, Topping the list of policies that Biden could leverage against Israel is a suspension of transferring offensive weapons to Israel if it fails to reduce civilian harm or getting desperately needed assistance to people in need. Van Hollen said the senator alluded to the policy days after Israeli airstrikes killed those seven employees of the World Central Kitchen. The Massachusetts, this is what I like to see. The Massachusetts Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren, which remember early on the wonderful activists who were bird dogging her rightfully sitting in her office. Uh, found her at dinner in, uh, I think, October, November of last year. Uh, good on them. Like, I know it feels like when we um, put in so much effort, when we risk arrest, when we, you know, get in people's faces, that it's all the same. It's not. It's not. And this is thanks to outside pressure. Each and every one of these senators has been pressured you know, whether it's phone calls, whether it's protests, their own constituents have told them, of course, the gr grand majority of, of us who believe in an immediate and permanent, not just immediate, but permanent ceasefire. Warren is saying she's going to seek to impede, oh yeah, the sale of F-15s to Israel, which was another fun headline. It wasn't just 2,000 bomb, uh, pound bombs, but F-15. What the fuck does Israel need F-15s for? After the killings of the uh, World Kitchen, uh, World Central Kitchen staffers, which included a U.S. Canadian citizen and three British nationals, 
Um, and the day again, a day before Biden administration is mulling a $18 billion transfer. Can we have fucking universal health care for the love of God? $18 billion. Can you fully fund uh, Medicaid? You know what I'm saying? Can we have full expansion of that? Can we have any? Can we have full student debt relief? Just do it. The whole thing. Like fucking anything we had to we had to scream to get free covid tests which by the way you can still get free covid tests from the federal government uh and everyone should i like put in a million different addresses and got all of them uh because they them shits is free and off the shelf they're like 30 dollars. so what are you waiting for but this is the kind like Again, um, if we can rebrand um, diabetes, cancer, um, mental health, uh, mental illness, if we can rebrand uh, arthritis as Hamas, I feel like that would go a really long way to getting some attention. So, you know, just be like, oh, my God, you know, uh, Arthritis is using me as a human shield. You better give me eighteen billion dollars, eh? Can can we get some health care? Okay, so um, good on Warren. Um, Biden administration have have generally stood in the steadfast support of Israel. Blah blah blah. We know, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know. So um, yeah, we're working on it. And you know who's not working on it? This guy's my fave. This is my fucking fave. This guy, man, John Fetterman, who continues to be this guy, like just this guy. This guy who everyone thought was a progressive, touted, I guess, pro-worker policies, big dude, seems kind of working class because he refuses to put on a fucking suit has a stroke we all defend him and pretend like he can string a sentence together which he very much cannot and look if you suffered a stroke yeah i mean i have every kind of empathy for you and we did he was running against fucking dr oz he won everyone celebrated Every, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us donated to his campaign. Motherfucker has made the greatest 180. I'm not a... Oh, here was another article. I'm not a, a progressive anymore. That was his big thing. Um, and specifically because it seems like he answered the, you know, the bat signal, the, uh, the, the Zionist signal put out, which is like, you will get hella money if you never, ever question anything we do. Okay. And he was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's go. And, you know, we've talked about how AOC didn't answer that call. And a lot of others haven't answered that call to their detriment or to their, you know, the fact that, uh, APAC is spending so much money to try and defeat them right now. Um, which by the way, I do think that if you have any extra change, in, in addition to becoming a patron, it's to kick it to any of the squad members to defend them against uh, what's happening right now. Um, I'm trying to get this article, but uh, um, here is John Fetterman on Twitter saying, quote tweeting the New York Times, which is, I mean, the lefty New York Times, especially on Israel, am I right? In a call with Benjamin Netanyahu, President Biden called an airstrike that killed aid workers unacceptable and appeared to condition support on how Israel changes course. And Fetterman writes, in this war against Hamas, no conditions for Israel. Like, who's writing this for him? Do you know what I'm saying? Did he just hire, like, Jonathan Goldblatt? Or, like, who, what... APAC stooge did he just hire to be like, here, you tweeted for me. I don't care. And this is my thing. Like, homie, you, you represent Pennsylvania. This is not a red state, man. Like, it's not a red state. You know, your, your voters are not in support of this genocide. And also if you're online, 
do you see the photos coming out? Do you at all? And this is, goes for every Zionist, every liberal Zionist. Like, do you do you stop paying attention? When do you pay attention? Does someone, because I don't have the heart because I don't want to engage to send some of these atro atrocious headlines and stories and images to my liberal Zionist friends, but they should know. Or are they back to just like food photos? You know, are they back to just like, you know, whatever bullshit they're doing? Have we realized that Instagram is the least happy place? It used to be great. Selfies, butt pics, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like pit animals. And now it's, it's just genocide. Anyway, this is your progressive Senator John Fetterman who has made his bed with the Israeli lobby. Um, clearly, like, what do they fucking have on him? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, the article I wanted to pull up, but I'm not getting access to right now, is that uh, his staff has is quitting in droves. Um, his, his staff is not happy, uh, and I wouldn't be either. Three of John Fetterman's top communication staffers have resigned in the last month, this is according to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, Nick Gavio was the deputy communications director, will leave at the end of March to take a new role with the Working Families Party, an actual progressive organization. His former communications director, Joe Cav Calvello, left earlier this month to work for Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson, another ostensible actual progressive. Uh, and Emma Mustian, a press and digital aide, also left Fetterman's office to work on the re-election of Senator Bob Casey. So uh, onward and upward, uh, much better choice for them. But like, my guy, my guy. And this is the thing about senators. He'll probably get re-elected. I mean, I, I really hope he doesn't. I truly hope he doesn't. But um, his people are like just, yeah, fleeing him. I did want to mention because of, you know, the I feel like some of the radio silence that we've seen from certain outlets and uh, people and one of those areas. And we talked about this on Tuesday with John Marco is in comedy. Right. And it's difficult because you have to find your way around. How do I speak about this? That's funny. How do I speak about this? That isn't just bringing everybody down, but I really want to say something and it isn't easy. And also. Who am I to say something? A lot of people second guess themselves, but that's different when you're like sort of a random comedian versus if you are, let's say, Stephen Colbert with a national platform. Now, I occasionally dabble in some Colbert. I really like his monologues. Um, he's been fairly silent uh, when it comes to the entire war, if you still want to call it that, on Gaza. There have been a couple jokes here and there. He initially did some coverage about the misinformation that was going around. Um, but I just did, like, you could just search. Now, I understand not everyone, they're not going to necessarily put it in the uh, the description on YouTube. But he's got, if you search Gaza, same with Israel, three videos, and one of them is with fucking John fucking Fetterman. <laughs> so there's not a lot that Colbert's been putting out. He's got an interview with John Dickerson, um, who's a head of CBS News, uh, uh, talking about war reporting. That's lightweight. Uh, first of all, Zionist, lightweight. And then, of course, a day ago, he speaks out about the attack on the World Central Kitchen. Now, I am of the mind that um, sometimes... <laughs> um, White people got to die for people to pay attention. <laughs> now, I don't say got to, but white people often uh, and foreign foreign like foreigners often die when they're in like war zones. And that's when everyone starts to pay attention or starts to say, hey, wait a minute. Maybe this has gone too far. Like, honey, have you not been paying attention for six months? Do you not see the horror stories? Um, have you not seen the babies in incubators? Have you not seen the children without their parents? I mean, like, like clearly you're, you know, uh, you're wealthy enough to have been in to insulate yourself, I guess, from the algorithm or something. But he spoke out uh, and this was for the first time. And look, I understand, again, what I'm trying to say is as a late night writer, as a late night host, like you might not want to always center, you know, Israel, but like let's just take a page out of the fucking onion or even like 
Steve, uh, uh, John Oliver, who's done an incredible job. You know, it is a weekly show. It's on HBO. Again, it is different. But like, there is a way to satirize all this. Look at Matt Lieb, right? Like, there is a way to talk about this issue. Um, here's one that's not that political. Hundreds of multi-prong Israel-Palestine proxy wars currently being fought across local Facebook groups. Very funny. There you go. Uh, that is from The Onion. But then it gets even better. Obviously, Americans explain how they are ignoring the Israel-Hamas war. Funny. Um, Israel assures it's doing everything possible to minimize civilians. No notes. Um, every word besides children used to describe Palestinians under 18. Again, the reason you don't do this is because as a mainstream outlet is because you're afraid. You're afraid of the backlash. You're the, you know, you're afraid of, um, which is just wild to me, right? Like Stephen Colbert is not going to lose his fucking job. I digress. There's a way to make this funny. It's just about whether or not you choose to do so, whether or not you choose to bring attention to it. You got the, some of the best writers in the country. You can make this work. But anyway, I digress. It had to be um, the world kitchen, world central kitchen workers being absolutely and deliberately targeted for Stephen Colbert to say something. Um, so here he is. Forgive me. It's uh, it's on. It's on Instagram. Uh, after unloading shipments of food, they were hit by multiple precision Israeli drone strikes. They were riding in three vehicles, including two armored cars carrying the World Central Kitchen logo on the roof. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu claimed it was a mistake, but he wasn't exactly apologetic. That's all. Unfortunately, in the last day, there was a tragic case of our forces unintentionally hitting innocent people in the Gaza Strip. This happens in wartime. Nothing just happens. You are responsible. If your answer is this happens in war, then maybe consider ending the war. Because this is not. This is not an isolated incident. On top of the thousands and thousands of innocent lives that have been lost, more than 200 aid workers have been killed in Gaza since the war began. Okay, so now once again, what is not just what is notable about this is not just that he's speaking about it, but it is the applause. And I will remind everyone, and we didn't talk about it, but that comedian Rami Youssef used uh, his SNL monologue to also say "Free Palestine," and he used that in it, it, he said that as part of a prayer that he was offering to the people of Gaza, and it was great. And the and the audience applauded. They applauded free Palestine. And then he said, free the hostages. And I was initially like, wait a minute, did he just do the line where let's free the hostages too? Like this, at this point, incredibly bad faith BS line of free the effing hostages. If I have to hear that one more time, we all know that it is a cover up because they want, if Israel wanted to free the hostages, they could have and would have and had done so. Um, they, they freed as many hostages as they fucking killed. Um, so it's just, anyway. But then Rami says, free all the hostages. Wink, wink. And uh, one of the best uh, pro protest signs I've seen in these six months is the free the 2.2 million hostages in Gaza. Just, mwah, chef's kiss. So, so some people use their platform. So that's Colbert. So that's how you know it's broken through. It's broken through um, even to Morning Joe, which we know Biden watches all the time because he only watches uh, news shows that have his name in it, not unlike Donald Trump. <laughs> so it's happening. Maybe something is happening. Um, we shall see. That being said, what should we talk about? Oh, my God. There's there's just so much. Oh, God. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Um, I, I'm trying to pull up, pull up this uh, this video. But first, quickly, thank you to Sweet Dane Dragon for gifting five subs over on YouTube. Again, you get access to our bonus fish if you're a member. That's so nice of you. And uh, Bcat K says Reaper. I'm not sure what that means. But I thought it meant Grim Reaper because I actually feel like 
Benjamin Netanyahu's voice is so scary to me. Like, I've felt this for a very long time. But, like, he has the voice of someone who eats babies. I don't, like, it's just very low and very terrifying to me. It's it's like a little buffalo bill, but it is not. And the way he said that, the way he said, like, these things happen. If you watch the video, if you're listening, notice there is an actual smirk. The entire time he's saying he's talking about like this incredible crime, this deliberate crime. Um, where the fuck is she? Come on now. Um, okay. Here we go. We got to talk about our girl Roseanne. So we have to check in with Roseanne, obviously, because uh, you know uh, Ambien still needs to be. Um, you know, made, made whole. <laughs> John Marco was talking about Ambien the other day and I was like gonna, we didn't have time to talk about which racial slurs he uh, uttered once he was on Ambien. Um, but Roseanne Barr was at Mar-a-Lago for a Cary Lake fundraiser. Again, Cary Lake running for Senate in Arizona. And uh, Kirsten Cinema not running. TikTok on how like is Kirsten Cinema gonna stump for Carrie too? Like we shall see. This will be fun. Uh, everyone should be supporting Ruben Gallego and you know making calls for him, donating to him and whatnot. Um, but this now here's the other thing about Mar-a-Lago. If you guys saw my Piers Morgan appearance, homie Vince or whatever was like. Mara lot one room is worth more than 18 million dollars and I was like what but I will say this room although it looks like where some billionaires eyes wide shut like you know uh probably low-key illegal things happen um it does look fancy it looks nice it looks fancy it looks like a room in clue you know uh, Trump did it with a bunch of stolen documents or um, Roseanne Barr did it in this little turban and um, I'm having a midlife crisis necklace. Uh, it just so here she is with massive, massive glass of wine, massive glass of wine, um, which like, I don't know, I like to believe the wine's good. But I've again, we've seen what cocktails look like out of uh, Trump properties. And they're not, so who knows? It might be piss. Straight Russian sex worker pee. Here she is. Hey, old bro. How are you doing? I'm here at uh, Mar-a-Lago supporting Carrie Lake. And it was a fantastic evening. And our Trump is here being the DJ. And I've just danced and everyone's amazed. So I'm just going to... <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, everybody, everyone's amazed because there was a DJ and he was Trump and then I danced and then we did the thing and then I got like, what? What are you talking about? Well, I got to silence my phone. Show that stuff. I don't need you relating it. I actually want to see that. That being said, I do think DJ T as an actual DJ, like I, if he doesn't win, can he at least headline Coachella. Can someone explain to him that that's like, I like being the president. I'm going to say to you, please drop out of college because it's going to ruin your lives. Do me a favor, drop out. They don't teach you nothing good. Uh, email me or Twitter me or whatever you call me and I'll help you with your life, but you've got to get out of college because it isn't nothing but devil worshiping, baby blood drinking, Democrat donors. What? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, if there was ever an ad for higher education, I think this is it. We found it. You know, hey, everybody, you know, I need a higher ed. You don't drink the baby's blood and do me because come here with my Mar a Lago wine, and all they're going to teach you is how to woke. And if you don't need to woke, because I'm an entrepreneur. And anyway, 
mommy's got to lie down for a little bit. Like I, uh, I wish, hmm. I guess what I want to say is I don't know how people still like walk around. You know what I mean? Like I wish like that, that, um, you know what I wish? I wish we lived in sort of like a video game. Uh, and like there was some sort of like, like you, a mute button or like a handicap that you could just place on someone where like they can't leave. You know what I mean? And then there are legitimately, I'm like thinking like, <sighs> there are people who can't move there. Now I'm getting sentimental and weird. But the point is, is that how does Roseanne Barr just go around anymore? Do you know what I mean? Like, can we put her in a bubble? Can we just put her in like, can we just like time out on her life for a little bit? You know what I'm saying? Can she, can she, can we Ursula Little Mermaid and get, like she loses the power of speech and song for a little bit? And then she's got it like that's five years. Anyway, um, uh, Ambien's a hell of a drug, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can't zoom in on this, but I'm really going to try. But behind her, if you can see this, there is an image of Donald Trump. Ugh, there is a painting of Donald Trump in the background, sort of like in, in some uh, like um, ostentatious uh frame and he's wearing like a v-neck kind of like club sweater and little khakis and is the most fucking 80s villain you'll ever see like this is the thing i feel like the 80s owes us an apology do you know what i mean like for a million things uh, but for donald trump more specifically we understand this is the most like like, Trump is a scrunchie on, like, a star search model contestant in a fucking Corvette. Like, he is the most corny Miami Vice ass, like, motherfucker who's ever walked the planet. He is so tacky. It is so comical. It's just, like, the idea of, like, him representing masculinity or strength. No, he's corny, corny, corny rich man. That's all he is. Shooter McGavin. And that's what he looks like in this image. He's just Shooter McGavin. It's a painting. And he looks like he's on a fucking lunchbox for Miami Vice, like a Miami Vice fucking lunchbox. And yet that's what a lot of people see when they see, um, O old Donnie there. Uh, Roseanne again was at this, uh, oh boy. Oh boy. She was at a, uh, fundraiser for Carrie Lake and along with, Ooh, there he is. Uh, speaking of villains, what's this asshole's name? Oh my God. I just had it. Stone, Roger Stone. Roger, I will be right behind you in the civil war jk i'll be smoking a cigar and laughing stone um again with roseanne Barr. oh boy and she remind okay during the event roseanne Barr spoke poolside to lit carrie lake's crowd in her speech Barr, who ran for president in 2012 on the green party and peace and freedom tickets stated time out one second can we just Put it out there. Not all Green Party candidates or Peace and Freedom can Party candidates, but some of them have been, have shown themselves to be quite the opposite of what they purport. And uh, maybe we should vet them a little bit more. Just because you're a celebrity and you hold vaguely progressive ideas doesn't mean you should be a Green Party candidate, right? And uh, this is to say, let's put aside like the idea of the Green Party and the idea of third parties. Yes, we believe in third parties. I think it's important, especially on a local level. I believe in building third party power on a local level. But jumping into the third party racket in at the presidential level, to me, 
it, it, it's ab it's not strategic number one it's not movement focused it's not organic it's not grassroots it's just to do it it's just to say i hate both parties and yeah yeah join the fucking club man we all do but um Hello, Kirsten Cinema. Like, we don't talk about the fact that she was a Green Party candidate enough. I'm just saying, like, we don't vet people enough. Um, and by we, I don't know who I mean. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. Baby blood and all that. Yes, indeed. Um, speaking of, though, Trump and wanting to look like that painting. Guys, have you heard that Trump has been losing weight? Here's a picture, if you're listening. He just, he just, it, it's a picture from Easter, and he's with his grandkids. Um, one of them really looks like Don Trump Jr., but I'm pretty sure these are, I'm pretty sure these are uh, the uh, the Stepford wives and the, the fake boys' children, uh, Kushner and and Ivanka <laughs> and they both have balloon animals that look like Donald Trump so immediately scary uh, but there he is and he just looks like a thinner man like he looks like a frailer man in the same suit so his suits haven't been refitted to really show the weight loss but he does look a lot thinner um and a lot of people are saying it's Ozempic Trump, like that this is the work of Ozempic. And I don't disagree. Now, there is an alternate theory. You tell me whether you think this is true. OK, so homie looks a lot thinner. He has he's he doesn't this. He looks particularly thin. He's been at different rallies and whatnot. He doesn't look that thin. We can we can look at it um, here. I'll subject you to some bullshit in a second. Um the alternate theory is that uh, actually it's Melania Trump who has been, uh, this is back in January, has been making sure that he skips his Sundays and cake at Mar-a-Lago. You know, my husband, he always wants, I can't let me get, oh, this is German now. No, no more German. I've got, <laughs> I can't, I've forgotten how to do my Melania. Fuck. Um. Uh, but my husband, he always go to buffet and he says that he needs everything. But I say, no, that's just boys talk. That's just buffet talk. He need to grab pudding by the b pussy. He need to grab. <laughs> I will work on this. I will work on this for you. Um, Bullshit. Okay. That's what I want to say. Bullshit. You only care like I care that Matt works out. He doesn't, but I care. You only care when you love someone. Melania doesn't fucking love someone. They haven't slept together in forever, if ever. They don't, she doesn't give a shit about what he looks like. She's like, if he's not nasty, it's going to be easier to leave him when I need to leave him because I've been wanting to leave him for so long. But no, a source tells Page Six that staying away from Mar-a-Lago Buffet at his Florida club along with help from wife Melania has done the trick. The insider says that Trump has allegedly dropped 30 pounds. The people at the club say he's eating healthier and less from the buffet. <laughs> Trump said has not been scarfing down ice cream sundaes or chocolate cake with two scoops of vanilla on it. This is all bullshit. Um, the former president repeatedly told a sketch artist he needed to drop some pounds. That I believe. I feel like he saw himself in the court artist sketches, which, by the way, some of them were incredibly generous and was just like, oh, boy. Oh, that, that neckline. Um, oh, his, his, his doctor, one of the many doctors who paid to lie about him, um, has, has reduced his weight through an improved diet and continued daily physical activity while maintaining a rig rigorous schedule. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. This guy doesn't fucking work out. This guy didn't give, he does not give a shit. Like that is, I wish that some, uh, you know, the, uh, MAGA red pillars could get through to him, but imagine he doesn't work hard for anyone else. Like he doesn't care. He, I mean, he sort of cares, but he doesn't really care. I'm betting he saw what happened to Mike Pompeo, which is, oh my God, overnight Pompeo's looking good. I kind of want to invade Iran now. Wow. 
Whoa, who's that over there? <gasps> That's Mike Pompeo. Former defense secretary? Yeah, I think so. Wait, let me Google it. Was it secretary of state? I'm pretty sure it was defense secretary. It was secretary of state. Shut up, bitch. Okay, whatever. He's still hot. Wow. Look at the way he just tucked his ch double chin like into his chest. That's amazing. I hope he buys us a drink here at Mar-a-Lago. It just buys us like a a a dirty martini with a bunch of melted ice inside of it. Um, Mike Pompeo was looking good. And he he was he was like, oh, I'm just I'm just dieting and fucking eating right. People, we all know for those of you who just diet and exercise, you know it's bullshit because when you exercise, it's really good for you. It's not about weight loss, though. It's super good for you. It helps you. Obviously, you're burning some calories, but you're also gaining muscle. And muscle can be like you can put on weight for muscle. Uh, diet doesn't always work. Again, things that are really good for you, but they're not going to show those results in just like a few months. Now, Ozempic, however, definitely will. As many celebs report or don't report, Ozempic will. Uh, and I absolutely think that Donald Trump is not above Ozempic. He wants that Mike Pompeo love. Okay. I'm done with that. We're done. Let's read a couple chats. Um, Anti-corporatist, what do you want me to send as a super chat? Nothing. This. Thank you. Robert, thank you for your super chat. We are dead and this is hell and very soon all the lights will go out. I like your positive attitude. Um told for Twitch says over a hundred UNRWA workers, dozens of UN workers. Yeah. It's like, so because it's a celebrity chef, I don't know. Like, I don't care what's the thing that breaks the camel's back or breaks through to people. All I care is that we fucking end this genocide. Um, and sweet Anne, you've been a member for 12 months, a whole year. Amazing. Amazing. And Reese, thank you so much for your super chat. Dizzle McFizzle says, can we cover the real questions, namely whether or not I should smoke crack or not? I'm leaning yes. These are the hard questions. I would say no, just because it's really addictive. And like, if you like to live indoors, I wouldn't. Uh, Sweet Dane Dragon says, imagine looking in from the outside the U.S. There are so many things in your system that make no sense to us. Oh, I know. You are, um, you're living in the, the cradle of democracy over there. My eyebrows are weird. Um, and I know it's not perfect. And I know folks from Finland, uh, Yilva, always, rem always remind me, Finland, right? About how the rightward shift in, um, in, the, in Scandinavia, in the Scandinavia. But no, things are things are fucking ridiculous. You want to you want to see a the level of ridiculous that it is that this country is. Matt Gates and White Ford Bronco, thank you uh, for that super chat. Y'all know there must be a freaky room in Mar-a-Lago that is twenty foot naked picture of him with a tiger striped bikini, right? Yes, 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 absolutely yes. Um, this was outside of a Lockheed Martin, which is has headquarters down on the peninsula in uh, the Bay area. Um, hang on. I don't know why this is. Oh, it's. And a bunch of people, like I think dozens of people basically locked down and they were like, had lock boxes, chicken wire, everything. And uh, locked down to block the entrance to Lockheed Martin in protest of, Lockheed's weapons dealing to Israel. And this was some fucking employee who tried to run them over. And then when he got out was like, you're a someone's going to die. Excuse me. It's very loud. I apologize. I'll turn it down. Yikes. So the, he's gunning it to a line of protesters in a white SUV and people are chasing after him saying, stop. You want to go to prison? Do you want to go to prison? He's saying, uh -oh. get out of the way. You go to somebody's going to die. Do you want to get out of the way or somebody's going to die? I'm telling you right now. And then he pulls out of the fucking knife. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. 
you're on video. You're on video. You're on video right now. You want to go to prison? Think about it. You want to go to prison? You fucking get out of the way. I gotta get to my job. Think about your You are felony. Think about your future. I gotta get to my job. You get out of the fucking way. Think about your future. 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 Don't do this! Yeah. We have eyes on you! Stop. We have Stop. eyes on you! Stop. We have Stop. eyes on you! Okay. Just a testament to, like, the kinds of protesters that are out there. And if you were, I mean... I mean, look at these are folks who are with like, I guess they're doing legal services and they're doing security work because they're not locked down. They're the ones surrounding the folks who are locked down, who are providing they're helping provide security to make sure that things like this don't happen. Listen to how they treat him. They're so nice to him. Right. Like they're just like, do think about your future. Do you want to hurt people right now? Do you want to go to prison? Right. They're they're trying to de-escalate, which is part of I mean, that's how you know you're in a good action. Right. Is like if security is actually keeping you safe when a crazed motherfucker who's I gotta go to work. Israel needs more bombs. Like, what do you, you bro? Take a day off. Everyone else was probably like, oh, thank God. I've been waiting for them to lock down these headquarters. We're complicit in genocide. And this guy's freaking out. I gotta go to work. Didn't you work from home for a really long time? I gotta go to work. Pulls out a knife. Looks like he's about to like cut a piece of fruit with it. Like he's just like so. It's like what do you. He's not really wielding it. He just has it. Which again. Speaking of. uh, If you're in Scandinavia looking in. You know we've got knife guys in this country. Do you guys have knife guys? The, The United States has knife guys. Yeah, 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 there's gun guys. There's also knife guys. Knife guys were just like, you're in a normal hanging out with friends and then just a seven inch blade or like a nine inch blade or a five inch blade or I don't know, whatever. However, a couple inches longer than their dicks, obviously. Um, That's how you that's how you know what blade you want. You go you go up to knife guy, uh, the knife seller, and you're like, yeah, I've got a mall epine. And they're like, oh, you're going to want, you know, a six inch blade. Um, <laughs> and he's like, you're like, no, I have a, a smaller pin, a micro. I don't know why suddenly there's an accent, but it makes sense. Um, so there are knife guys. We just have knife guys. People running around with fucking switch blades and they just just like are like, oh, hey. <sighs> men. You already live in patriarchy. Like, shit is already generally going your way. Can you just not? Can you not? Anyway, I don't know if they've ID'd this man yet. I don't know what's happened with him. But very scary. And yet very, very heroic and brave um, to the people who are out there. Okay. I was fed this on Instagram and I have to share it with you because... While Bernie Sanders behind the scenes is supposedly pressuring or is pressuring Joe Biden around his Israel policies and trying to condition aid for fucking finally, there is an election going on. And Joe Biden has long relied upon Bernie Sanders' support um, to get us, to get the progressives, to get the young people, to figure out what they're into, man. Oh, they want to, like, own a home one day, man, or they want to, you know... Uh, not go into medical debt. Uh, yeah, they want to like send their kids to school and make sure they're not gonna die in a uh, mass shooting or themselves die. Um, yeah. So he's pulling out. This is Joe Biden now. Joe Biden's running pre-roll ads like Donald Trump. Donald Trump's on X running a bunch of like Donald Trump Jr. Like my father. <laughs> Hey, hey, how's it going? I don't know where you are right now, but look, if you're like me and you just fell off the couch of a friend that's letting you crash for like the 12th night and uh, their family's like, when are they going to leave mom? And you're like, look, <laughs> I'm here. Um, but also one the couch is like also a tanning bed. You're going to want to donate to my father's campaign. So, so that's what they're running on X. 
And then Joe Biden on anything that's vaguely liberal is also running his, uh, his like, This is how his ads start off. They're just like, folks, it's not a joke. We're behind in our fundraising time. We got to every day. Okay. Can't say. Hey, folks, I'm saying, that's what I'm doing. And you're like, I don't know whether to skip through this pre roll or what's happening. Um, and and then there's the other ones that are like it's like all of a sudden it's like really well lit and it's just uh you know a, a, a beautiful man's face by the name of Barack Obama he, like just attractive just like hey everyone hey there's an election coming up very important and my friend Joe here is running for re-election and then Biden's just like he's right and what we got a new is you know and you're like i don't know what what are you selling me um but so that's the two of them <laughs> i've never i haven't done that impression either of those in a mirror so i don't know what they look like but hope they're a little bit better than my melania i hope they make up for the melania but i saw this uh, fed to me on Instagram, and it is uh, not a bad idea. It is Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders um, watching a – God, I really – oh, want to zoom. There we go. And they're watching it on a tablet. So it's like two old men on tablet watching third old man who happens to be Donald Trump. And this is a Trump clip back from December. He's at Mar-a-Lago, and he's telling his billionaire friends – um, at Mar-a-Lago that he knows they're rich and he's going to make sure they stay rich. Hang on, let's start from the beginning. Well, that's everything you need to know about Donald Trump. God damn it. I might have to re-click on this. Because you are all people that have a lot of money. I know uh, <laughs> 20 of you and you're rich as hell. <laughs> so we're going to give you tax cuts. We're going to pay off our debt. Well, that's everything you need to know about Donald Trump. When he thinks the cameras aren't on, he tells his rich friends, quote, we're going to give you a tax cuts. Can anybody in America? Okay. So it's like Bernie and Biden standing in this blue background and uh, they have just gotten f done watching the tablet, which I, I think is kind of, it's like a fun, I was like, I immediately was like, I'm first of all, Bernie's on screen, so I'm watching. Second of all, they're doing a live react. So they're playing the internet game. Love it. Uh, and then Bernie actually is intelligible. Like, I don't know what Biden just said. I think uh, that's when he tells you what he really means. Like his fate. Look, here's the thing about Biden. I know his policies. Some of them are good, but his face does look like it's animatronic. Like it looks like, like someone is in there, like moving the small little, like there's just a, again, he's had a little bit of, you know, he's had a little bit of the, a little bit of the Botox, maybe a little facelift. But the point is, is just. There's a, there's a little bit like only this moves, you know, up here. And uh, it just, it's very, again, it looks animatronic, like a, a little bit of an animatronic squirrel. America, imagine that at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, billionaires are doing phenomenally well, that so he's going to give them huge tax breaks. And then at the same time, he's going to cut Social Security and Medicare and programs that our kids need. This is his economic plan. That's what he wants to do. Cutting taxes for his friends, cutting social security for you. That makes me mad as hell, quite frankly. The hypocrisy. Okay, so <laughs> it is the mo it is really like Stelter and Adlet. What's it, their names? The the Muppet old men. Like they truly are the Muppet old men. And Biden's like Bernie's older than biden or they're basically the same age but he's giving like young younger brother vibes here um he is a younger brother bernie sanders is i believe he is is, is younger is his brother larry younger or older i thought he was older um and biden's kind of like he's doing the old man thing where he's sort of like stares off in the distance and then and then when he's reading folks this is what he wants you to believe. Imagine doing all I've seen from rich people. 
Mais j'ai vécu. J'ai vécu. And then, and then Bernie's like, "Oh, I, I, I'm listening to you because you actually believe what you're saying. Like, you know, the hypocrisy is outrageous. I don't need a teleprompter to tell me the rich don't need a fucking tax break, and that it makes me very mad because it makes me very mad." It's just outrageous. This is what he says to his billionaire friends. Not quite what he's saying at his rallies. There are 1,000 billionaires in America, in this country. They pay an average tax rate of 8.2 percent federal taxes. So I have a plan. We have a plan. Asking, I have a plan. We have a plan. Oh shit! Giving B Bernie a little bit of credit there. I love that. Um, which is very cute. You could just say we have a plan. In his good buddies to begin to pay their fair share. You have one candidate who wants to cut Medicare and Social Security, and one who's going to protect it. That's why I'm supporting Joe, and I hope you will as well. <laughs> Thanks, pal. You know, I really needed it. I'm fucking up every which way from Wednesday. <laughs> and then there's there's a little bit of a, he throws his arm around him. Bernie's got a smile on. They're old friends. Biden. You know when old men, what is what is up with the receding lip line of an old white man? I don't understand. Like, you know the point where it's just like, it just, it just goes back into nothing. And you're like, you know, and then suddenly, <laughs> it just, what is it? Somebody tell me what it is. Anyway, uh, pulling out the big guns, ladies and gentlemen, for the election, and that would be Bernie Sanders. This has been the bonus Friday episode that is free. Free to listen, free to watch back, become a patron if you like the show, if you like the bad impressions patreon.com slash bituation room is where you go you can also become a member on youtube you can become a member on twitch but you know what patreon not gonna lie give me gives me the best cut and there's great content and so many perks discounts on merch discounts on the american prospect patreon.com slash bituation room what a wild ride it has been thank you all so much have a wonderful weekend we'll see you tuesday have I read all the happy super chats? Yes. Bye-bye.